Hi, everybody. So, starting chapter 11. Yes, we're skipping chapter 11.1 because it's late. Today, we're going to be talking about surface area and volume. This is an extension of all the stuff we learned about area in chapter 10. So first off, here's the sort of thing that we're going to be finding the surface area and volume of. A polyhedron. It's a 3D object made of polygons. It has faces, edges, and vertices. The faces are the polygons. Edges are line segments where the faces meet. Vertices are corners where you know, three or more edges meet. Let's get some practice identifying these things, because that's the sort of problem we'll be doing for homework tonight. So, how many vertices does this shape have? Well, it's got five of them. How many edges? Well, that's a less fun question. It's got eight edges. Don't forget their hats if you're listing these. And how about its faces? Well, this thing only has five faces, but they're different kinds of polygons, so we need to specify which kind they are. So these are all triangles, and one square. Well, it looks like a square, but it might not be, so I won't specify. Why don't you try listing those things for this shape? Well, we'll just have to check those. Um, also, is TV an edge? No. No, it's not, because an edge is a line segment where two faces meet. And TV, although we can draw it, is not, a, is not an intersection of two faces. But on to the meat of today's lesson, prisms. A prism is a polyhedron with two congruent parallel faces. Those are its bases. Its other faces, the lateral faces, are always rectangles. So, prisms are named for the shape that is their bases. A pentagonal prism has two pentagons, while a triangular prism has two triangles. Now, what are we going to do with these? Oh yes, sometimes they lean. So, Although they are definitely parallel, they're not necessarily directly over each other. This is where we get oblique prisms and, well, we'll talk about cylinders in a moment. Surface area. This is what we're talking about. Finding the surface area is simple, but not necessarily easy. The way that you find surface area is by finding the area of each face separately and then adding them together. Since this is a rectangular prism, all we have is rectangles. So I'll let you figure that one out yourselves. How'd you do? Well, we've got two 240s this face, oops, plus two 
plus uh, two two hundreds plus two four eighties. Let's see. That's how they work. And it would be great if all of them were that simple. But many of them are not. How about the surface area of this triangular prism? What would be the lateral area? see. We've got two faces that are the same, both of which are rectangles that are 5 times 12. And then we have this other rectangle on the bottom, which is 6 times 12. So that will give us a total of 192. How about the base area? Sosley's triangles, we can figure out what the height is, turns uh, using the Pythagorean theorem, and then find the area of each triangle, which turns out to be 12. So this means that the total surface area is going to be this plus 24 which would be 216 square centimeters. I'm not super worried about units until we get to the end. We can also use this formula, but it's about the same thing. Now, try to find the surface area of this hexagonal prism. lateral area should be 432. The base area is about 93.53 oh, times 2, because there's two of those hexagons, and that should be blue for consistency's sake. And so that means that the total surface area is going to be about 619.1. Squared. Hope we got that. Now, cylinders are exactly the same, but they use circles instead of polygons for their bases, which interestingly makes cylinders easier since they always use the same formula, and unlike with say, a hexagon or a pentagon, we won't need to use any trigonometry to find apothems or anything like that. In fact, we just need to use this formula. And really, we could combine it to say that it's 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. And conveniently, we need to leave it in terms of pi. So what would this total be? That's right. 180 pi plus 200 pi equals 380 pi. We're almost done. Except now, volume. Goodness, that's a whole other topic. Except that it's actually easier. All we need to do is find the area of one base and multiply it by 
the height, that is, the length of its lateral faces. Oh wow, I even spelled height right on my first try. Well, let's give our homework a try, and I will see you tomorrow.